we'll see what happens. If the YouTube thing doesn't work, then we can just keep using Zoom. <laughs> Uh, what is it? it's about five after um yeah i guess we could just kind of go around and do some some introductions uh let me for for folks who have not been to this particular jam before let me just give kind of the standard standard pre-jam spiel which is this is a slow jam so if uh if at any point it feels like it's going too fast um well, I guess everyone will be muted during the during the playing, but you know, uh, I may be able to see you on video or between between tunes when uh, I unmute everyone. Feel song. free to say, you know, "Hey, this is this is too fast. Let's slow down." Further than that, I think right now, what Move. I'm Move over. I'm, oh. I'm playing with this iPad to do backing uh, guitar chords, and so won't speed up or slow down and right now i think it's set at 86 <coughs> beats per minute um so i can adjust that in between tunes and we'll, we'll see what happens so right it's a slow jam um the general format is that i will play a tune once at either a kind of moderate faster tempo just so people hear what it sounds like um and then I guess before that, I will mute everyone but myself just so that we don't fight each other in the audio space. Uh, I'll play it once and then I'll turn on the iPad and we'll play it any tune probably probably about five times through. Um, and also in between tunes, if that's feeling like too many times or not enough times, feel free to let me know. I'm going to paste the link of, or the list of tunes we're going to play into the chat just so I have it handy. Uh, where is that? Okay, so in the chat now are the tunes we're going to play. Um, I will be sharing my screen during the tune uh, with the sheet music, music. Up, up, and hopefully um, people will be able to see that. If not, uh, let me also share this. So the, slowerthandirt.org is the website um, for this jam. And there should be a link up at the top that's like tune book or core tunes or something like that. and. All of the tunes that we're going to play are there with sheet music and recordings. Um, so if you want sheet music or a recording for later or whatever you want, um, check out the website. Those are all there. And that's also where the tune list for next month's jam will be posted once I put that together. Um, yeah, so while let's, let's just. Uh, yeah, let's let's just um, if you want to unmute yourself and say hello and just kind of introduce yourself and say where you are, that would be cool for folks who are here, and then we can get playing. Uh, so I'm Josh, and I'm in Seattle. There's no good way to do this in order. Uh, <laughs> I'm, up, I'm in Tacoma. Okay, you're on. Uh -oh. Jackie, mute yourself quick. Oh, hell, hell. I said Bill from Edmonds, Washington. Hey. Nan from uh, Everett, and I think I went to your, uh, the first slow jam I went to was, I think, four years ago at Folk Life. Could have been oh, three. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's right. oh, I'm good. Kathy from Cape Cod. Ooh, hey. Oh. Cool. Good to see you. David hey. from Seattle. Hey. Tom from Bainbridge Island. Bridge, nice. Started from Seattle. Martha from Belltown, and that feedback was that oh. feedback was me on the phone trying to help Jackie get on. Uh oh. Uh, well, I hope we can get Jackie on. I haven't. How are we getting well? We're we're Duncan and Jenny Matheson from Sebastopol, California. <laughs> we used to live up in Washington, and we went to a few of the. I would say early slow dirt jams. 
Yeah. Hi, Jenny. Cool. I'm friends with you on Facebook. This is Karina. I'm in Tucson at the moment. I'm one of the administrators for the old, the Facebook group Old Time Open Jams, and I have this group on my calendar of virtual jams. Great. I knew your name looked familiar. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for inviting us. Oh. I'm Barbara from Whidbey Island. Whidbey, nice. I used to live in Coopville. Freeland. Freeland. Uh, oh, Emily's got a banjo today. Cool. Let's see. I think. Let me um. Let me go ahead and mute folks. I'm gonna play Abe's Retreat once and we can use this as a sound check too so you let I'll, I'll unmute you after my first time through just um so you oh yeah i'm not gonna play it fast i'll play it at the te at the slow tempo so that i can have you tell me if the ipad and my fiddle are like in in balance um let me see where is this One, two, one, <laughs> two, three, four. So was that um, that was about the tempo I was figuring on was was the mix of sound okay? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. So that's for, what for me, for me. Excellent. <laughs> that's what Abe's retreat sounds like. Um, let's. I'll do that. I will start over, and it will. Oops. It will play five times. <laughs> One. Oh. Nope, stop. I was going to share my screen. Um, there we go. One. Two. One.
last time. Okay, <laughs> that work okay for folks? Yes. Excellent. Ah, cool. <laughs> We've got some more people joined. Good to see you all. <clears throat> uh, let's see, what's up next? Oh, Josh? Yeah. Yeah, um, the, the um, um, connectivity to my living room for YouTube just uh, didn't really prove to be uh, uh, um, adequate. Uh, it's a little surprising because I play I play the YouTube app and that way all the time, but not but that it wasn't really working out. Yeah, so I think there is. Today. I think there is some issue with streaming from YouTube where it it um, like there's there's some kind of trade off. I chose there's like a normal low latency and ultra low latency and i think the trade-off is connections work better at normal but i wasn't sure how much of it is on my end i mean i do have weak wi-fi uh yeah i don't know it connects to the television uh, you i mean in principle it should be a really good idea because um uh youtube um when when mirrored off of my phone is it just works a lot better than zoom but uh yeah uh, kind of kept having it freeze up uh, quite a bit that's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, let me see here. So I think the next one was going to be uh, Mace Bell's Civil War tune, which is also a. Uh, it's one of the Bonaparte tunes. I don't remember which one. Bonaparte oh. Crossing something or other. <laughs> um, Bonaparte Crossing. Crossing the Alps is what you have in your peak music. Oh yes, there it is. Yeah, okay, Napoleon crossing the Alps. Eating his lunch. Parts March. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Ah, too many windows going at once. Oh, one thing I should probably say about the sheet music uh, that I pull up is that it is a suggestion. Um, I am probably not playing it exactly that way any given time, and you don't need to either. It's just kind of a suggestion for how the tune might go. And in a in a regular live jam, you just kind of all can converge on a common version eventually. Um, so don't feel like you need to be cueing strictly to what what the sheet music says um let's see i'm gonna pull that up because i would at least like to try to play it the way it is on the sheet music at least <laughs> once <laughs> so let me uh let me try that 
Uh oh. Okay, I will, I will play it once relatively quickly and then uh, turn on the iPad and start over. So here is, oh, I need to mute everyone too. Here is what this sounds like maybe. <laughs> Basically, what it sound like. Let's do that much more slowly and with backup. One, two, one.
next time. How do I unmute you now? <laughs> there we go. I like that tune. I do too. Um, is that a good number of times to go through them? Or are people happy with that yes. kind of length? Yeah. Uh, All right. What is up next? Um, Oh, uh, Buffalo Girls, one of one of the tunes named Buffalo Girls. Anyway, this one's, I think, a Midwestern version. Let me pull this up here. Do I not have, oh, there it is. Like I know I have Buffalo Girls in this thing. You do. Yeah. Okay. Nope. Oh, man, I need two computers for this one, for one for the music and one for the Zoom. Uh, let's see. So, all right. I will. You look busier than a one-armed DJ. <laughs> well, I've realized I've realized now that most of the people who do this type of thing have two people running it, and like one one to do the tech and one to do the other stuff, and uh, that makes sense. Maybe I can recruit Cam to help me here. <laughs> um. So let me mute folks again, and I will play it. Uh, quickly and then start over with the with the iPad and do it more slowly. Um, let's see. Share. Okay, so it sounds sounds something like this. Um, Right, and I usually play this in cross tuning. So forgive me if I get some sour notes the first time through. Let's see.
like that that was most of the notes that are on there anyway <laughs> uh here we go with the ipad one two one two
think I, I think I learned more or less that version of that tune from Chirp Smith, who's a great Midwest fiddler. Um, he's got a, a great recording somewhere. I don't know if it's on YouTube, but if you if you look for it, it's around. Um, yes, the composer of Squirrel Hunters. I believe so. Yes. Okay. I thought Hartford made that up. I thought it was the consensus that John Hartford pretty much made the squirrel wonders up. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I'm, I'm not as familiar with that one. Uh, let me pull up Sweet Marie here. Sweet Marie is a little crooked, which is fun. Did they track it down further, Billy? Oh. I keep moving over to the wrong window here. This is nuts. Here we go. So let's see, what about Sweet Marie? Sweet Marie, not everyone plays it crooked like this. Um, and by crooked, I mean, it's got an extra, it's got an extra half measure, I think, at the start of the, the B part. Um, so if you find yourself playing this in a jam with other people and they're not playing it the way I'm gonna do it here, uh, just go ahead and roll with that. It's, uh, it's a good tune either way. <laughs> And there's a waltz version of it, too, if you look for that, which is also fun. Um, let's start. Let's Let me let the sharing again. Um, let's see. So yeah, once again, this is once, once through a little faster and then I'll do it with the iPad slower. Um, so it sounds something like this. That was pretty close anyway. And it's just got that um, got that extra extra half measure at the beginning of the B part, which is fun. I like it anyway. One. Two. One. Two.
that sounds like a Hank Bradley type of tune. It sounds does a little like, bit. I, you know, it's not, <laughs> I, I'm not saying you wrote it, but it sounds like something you would write. You know, it does, like yeah. Same kind of idea. So. Yeah. I don't, I don't really know where that one comes from either. Um, yeah, I, I don't know anything about that. It, it feels a little Cajun influence too. I, I don't know. Um, I should probably look that up at some point. <laughs> that does kind of... Alan Kaufman told me this story about um, on the on the internet. He told me about how he um, he he'll like record a tune and then make it sound like a seventy eight. And he ran into somebody that almost got in a fight with him saying that Hank Bradley didn't write that tune, that he had heard it on a 78. <laughs> That's awesome. I really, I, uh, it. Oh, it's uh, the teabag blues that he's. Tea bag, oh, nice. Yeah. I don't, I don't have it handy, but Hank Bradley has this great book on applied ethnomusicology. It's, it's got a title like Plundering, Stealing, and Cultural Appropriation, a, a handbook to applied ethnomusicology something like that and it's, it's got his thoughts on on playing old time tunes and writing old time tunes that sound somewhat traditional um it's got a bunch of great tunes in it it's it's a really fun book and i think he sells it via mail order out of his house um, i should put a link to that up on the website because it's a fun book uh we got up next oh Clayhole waltz I did find an A waltz. Let me uh, let me pull this up here. I might have to experiment with the tempo on this. I don't. I think the tempo on on waltzes might want to be a little bit different. Um, but first, pull out the sheet music. All right. apologize i i had not had so there's a, a setting in zoom that's like turn on original sound which is supposed to make me sound well if not better but at least not drop out so much so if i've been dropping out i apologize for that and uh that should stop happening now <laughs> just turn that on Um, it's a long, long waltz, so I'm not gonna, I, I think I will just have it play this four times through and you can join in whenever you feel like you've got it. Um, Test the tempo real quick, too. One, two, one, two. Yeah, okay. That sounds. Sounds close. Let's. What did I just do? Okay, I'll give this a try. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three.
me just uh, let me just real quickly put in the repeats on the iPad. <laughs> Okay, let's try that again with repeats. <laughs> one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three.
time. I like that one. It is a nice one. I I, uh, I picked it up from Tony Mates at the Wedgwood Alehouse Jam, but I went looking <laughs> for recordings, and there's some there's some good ones out there. I don't remember who, like the old source recording, is from, <sighs> but there are a few twenties I think versions of it. Uh. So let's give any banjo players a moment to uh, retune into G. I don't know if you just have to take your capo off or what. Um. Is Paul popular in our book? The latest book. It isn't in yeah. the one from last year, but it is in the current one. Okay. I think I downloaded it off the, the, um, the tune book off the email you sent out today. You know, I checked to see if you got the current book in there. Okay. Yeah, it should be. It should be in there. Um, okay. They're all in alphabetical order, right? Uh, let me yeah, check. I'll have <laughs> tunes way at the end. Page eight. <laughs> I got the wrong book. That's okay. I'll do. I'll. It's only the KG. Yeah. 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 Gosh, you, you know, you were talking about making a new song sound old. There's one I found that I just adore. It's uh, Amelia's Waltz. Oh, yeah. That's a beautiful one by Bob McQuillan. Oh, yeah. 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 That's one of my favorite waltzes. Yeah, Bob, I've got, yeah, I have them here somewhere. Bob McQuillan has a stack of like 15 notebooks full of tunes he wrote. Um, I don't remember how many hundred, but there's a lot of them. And there's a number of good ones in them. Amelia's is probably the one that has made it out most. I don't, I don't, I think Amelia and Dancing Bear are the two that I hear of his that are played the most, but there, there are a few that have made it into 
Yeah. Well, I kind of knew Bob McQuillan when I was a New England person, and yeah, uh, yeah he um, he he wrote a tune a week, kind of like Sarah did, and yeah. uh, and except that he's a lot, he was a lot older than Sarah, and he and I think he had way over a hundred. Um, oh, Amelia's yeah. I had actually not encountered until the Dusty Strings Jam, at least, but. Um, uh, some of his, he, there, there is a bunch of he, that go way back with him that uh, are uh, played, just played all the time in New England. Yeah, I should add Amelia's to the tune book. I, I really like that one, and more waltzes, more better. <laughs> so let's see. Um... Right, Hollow Poplar is up next. What's that? Where did this version come from? Um, this one I've just got, I'm pretty sure, off of uh, a jam at the Wedgwood Ale House. And it's, it's um, who would have been leading it at that point? Could have been Tony or, or David Kahn or... Um, I, I don't have a particular host written down for my notes on that, so it might have been one of the regulars. Because <laughs> it's different than the one than the the more widespread version. It I mean, is, it's, yeah, it's it's hard to find a version that's like this uh, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I think Arthur Smith really popularized the other one. I think that was one of his big numbers. Yeah, I don't know exactly what the origin of this version is, but I I hear it more than the Arthur Smith version around, or I have anyway around town. Um, so I don't know quite how that works but it's interesting to see like it's nice it's nice there's still like regional variations which is cool even in the age of the mm -hmm. internet where everyone is everywhere it's not tony mates no okay at least the one it's not the same one that's in the complete fiddle tunes i either did or did not learn at the tra tractor tavern okay interesting i will have to you know i've got all these recordings of the wedgwood jam i should i should find out which one i pulled this one off of and see if i can figure out who the host was because maybe maybe it's them <laughs> uh let's see and now of course i don't remember how it goes <laughs> <laughs> oh right this one okay um let me mute folks again uh okay so it sounds it's something like this and please forgive me i, I don't think i played this one in months um
yeah it's a it's an interesting version um yeah and i think i've heard it played at the portland gathering too so it might be might be a northwest variation <laughs> I think I think Arthur Smith played it a lot on the radio. I think that was one of his big tunes. So maybe somebody learned it off of that and changed it. Oh, Jeff City, um, also known as Bill Caton's Hornpipe. Um, for Jefferson City, Missouri, I believe. Right, and this is the one of the ones where I think most people play it with the parts in the other order. I like it this way, but I think it works either way. And I think, I think maybe Roger Netherton plays it this way too. And I, I probably, when I was trying to relearn it, watched his YouTube videos a bunch. You should just pretend like you don't know any better. Just like it just goes that way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as far as just I'm concerned, it does, That's so. what we do nowadays. Yeah. We don't know any better, so it's all... <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, you play it that way? I don't know. That's not the way yeah, I play I don't it. Know. This, and, uh, this and Spotted Pony are the two I know that I play like backwards from a lot of folks. Yeah. And the other ones I probably oh. don't know that I play backwards, so... With all those augmenting diminished chords, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Share. Um. So this one sounds something like this. Um. different slower so let's let's do it that way instead <laughs> one two one A lot of a lot of notes in this one. <laughs> one. Two. One.
last time. It's a, it's a different tune, slower. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, I like that one though. It's a, it's a good, um, it's a good square dance tune. That's where I first heard it. Yeah. Oh, and uh, Karina had asked what the alternate title for that is. So it's it's uh, Jeff City, and the other the other name I know for it is Caton's Hornpipe or Bill Caton's Hornpipe. Um, Tunes, I think, called Possum Up a Gum Stump, and this is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. And let's see. I will play it once and then uh, start over with the iPad. How's this? No. Nope. No, I've lost the play. I've lost the button where I can mute you. Where is it? <laughs> there we go. Uh, so something like this. <laughs> somewhere <laughs> uh, try this one two 
One, two, three, four. This is also too fast. Knock that down another notch. One. Okay. A little bit better. Two. One. Two.
You know, we didn't used to have opossums in the in the Northwest. You know, I do now know. though. <laughs> yeah, should do now. We do now, but yeah, we didn't used to have them when I was growing up. We never had them. Oh, wow. Huh. They migrated up here. Interesting. I I know. I know. I'm, I'm certainly seeing more now than I did when I was a kid. So. Yeah. The somebody said that like somebody from the South brought them so they'd have them to hunt. Huh. You know, and to eat and right. such, but they aren't native to this. I no. did not know that. Yeah, they're they're. Uh... A possum got one of our last chickens last time we had Ooh. chickens, and I don't really? know how it made it into the coop, but it, uh, it went after it. It's it lucky was... the chicken didn't kill it. Chickens well, are a lot more cunning than a than an yeah, opossum. It was uh, <laughs> it was our last our last chicken. We had three, and two of them had already died, and so it was on its own. And um, I think if there had been more of them, they kind of probably could have driven it off, but it. Uh, yeah, it was, I, they have I, to. I didn't enjoy going out in my bathrobe with a shovel to try and smack oh. away the possum either. They have to be more cunning because they're so chicken. Yeah, <laughs> I understand they, they have... eat ticks, but I don't. Uh, I don't think we have a lot of ticks in Seattle. So no, no, no. Useful that is. Yeah. Uh, I touched one by mistake once when I lived in Ballard. <laughs> There, so my mom used to work at um, Third Place Books in Ravenna, and they had a baby possum fall through the raised ceiling, you know, through the little ceiling, onto a pile of books. Once they named it Bartleby. And, uh... <laughs> Bartleby the Scrivener. Yep. <laughs> what? They have about as little brain as a mammal can have. <laughs> they're not mammal. Well, they're. Marsupials doesn't matter. Oh, and now we got rats gone to rest. So more, uh -oh. more pointy, furry things. Uh, let's see. But they're really smart. They are. This one, this one is a short tune, so I'm going to set the iPad to play this eight times instead of five. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't know much about this tune either. It's in, um, it's in Jeff Todd Titan's book of Kentucky fiddle tunes, and I guess that's where it comes from. <laughs> I was uh, remarking to you earlier to see your Josh that it's, uh, um, uh, seems to me to be a variation of Billy in the Low Ground. It does have that feel to it, yeah. There's not not an awful lot to it, so you could I think you could read a lot into it. <laughs> Let's see. Switch sharing. Uh, so this one sounds something like this. Um... So it's really just kind of arpeggios and things like that. Um, here we go. Let's try that slower. One. Two. One.
more time. right along. Uh, it's a little after Ooh. four, but I'm not <laughs> booked for anything else, so it's I will go ahead and do the waltz, and anyone who has something else they need to be at it for, sorry we're running over. <laughs> Thanks for staying if you do. Uh, That's a good tune, that rap's gone to rest. You can it get. is. Get into that low part, you know. Dig in. Yeah, you can really. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one for practicing if you're if you're on the fiddle for practicing like bow rocking and kind of pulsing some things. And yeah, it's yeah. it's a good technique tune. Josh, I'd like to share an idea that came up because I I kept forgetting the bridge. I mean, my mute on top of my bridge, and oh, of yeah. course when I put it in the case, it would put pressure on it. Oh. I got chewed out by my luthier, but what I came up with is those are magnets on my bridge. Oh, hey, look at that. Nice. And it's so cool because you can change the size of the magnets, but the best part is you can just slide them around to wherever you want uh, for, for different, I found That's a very it's not cool just idea. aesthetics. I found it's best for in the middle, but you can move it up high, you can move it low, you can move it to the left, you can move it to the right, and they don't budge. That These are the, neat. oh. These are the super powerful magnets yeah. that you get, yeah. like at the hardware store. I've got a so, few of those. I should definitely give that a try. That's a great and, idea. Yeah, yeah, and you can use get them different sizes. I know somebody I saw on the web that glues a jewel to them <laughs> for extra weight. <laughs> nice. And yeah. I thought about if it would dampen even more if I glued some rubber on the back. But I like it just the way it is. Yeah, no, so, that looks great. And, yeah, and so I don't have to worry about my case hitting the... Yeah, I have, you know. I have done that once. Just like split one of the ebony mutes right over using oh the bridge my. Like, as an axe. Luckily, it, it split the mute instead of the bridge or the <laughs> instrument. But oh my. That's a great idea. I will uh, I'll have to play with that. I, I'll dig out the box of powerful magnets and see what that sounds like. Because, yeah, I mean adding different bits of mass to different parts of the bridge would definitely let you play around with the tone. That's that's a great idea. Uh, there we go. So last up is another waltz, a, a two waltz day. Hooray. Um, <laughs> so Susie's Waltz is written by David Kahn, who's uh, local to Seattle now. He's been... God, he's been in a bunch of bands. Um, yeah, he, he gets around. He's everywhere. I think I think he might have been in a band that won Clifftop in the 80s, um, too. Let's see. And I believe I believe Susie is his sister, so this is a waltz for, waltz for her. Let me find this. Same thing with this one, just play it four times through and pick it up where where it sounds right to you. Um, so, or his mute gone. His interface just changes every time I look at it. There we go. One.
I think that's a sweet tune. I agree. I like that one too. <laughs> yeah, those accidentals are a bit of a workout. Yeah, they are. It's a good, uh, good one for getting that, uh, getting that sorted out. <laughs> ah. Um. Yeah, so that's that's what I had lined up for today. Feel free to stick around and chat if you want to. Um, and so the the next one will be whatever the fourth Saturday of <laughs> November is. I haven't. I should have looked at that beforehand. <laughs> um, that would be the uh, t the day after Black Friday, wouldn't it? I think probably yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. We'll probably not. Hey, not a lot of traveling for Thanksgiving this year, huh? Well, right. oh, I think we're gonna have uh, have some Zoom Zoom dinners. Yeah. Thanks, Josh, for all yeah. you've done. I think oh, you've you. made your I think you've made your website into a masterpiece. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Let me Thanks. second so, that. It is wonderful. It's a work in progress, but I'm I'm happy with how it is right now. So thank you. Uh -huh. It was good to see everybody. Yeah. Likewise. Likewise. Yeah. Yeah. Judy joined the jammer uh, as well here. And yeah, that, that, now we're going to go <laughs> off and uh, fill out our ballots. Excellent. I know. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, that mine had been counted the other day. So. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Grateful for I you. was undecided. I was. I couldn't <laughs> decide whether to run or to <laughs> to drive with yeah. my ballot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good to see you all. Thank you, yeah. Josh. Thank great you. About great to see you. And uh, I hope you all have a great rest of your weekend and everything Happy else. Week. And um, yeah, if you're on the mailing list, I'll send out some mail about what the next tunes are going to be for next month, probably later today or tomorrow. And I'll post them to the website and Facebook when I make the event. Okay, great. Thank you again. This is a wonderful thing you do. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm glad people are getting some enjoyment out of it. Absolutely. <laughs> much appreciated. Cool. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time, I hope. Bye. Yep. Okay. I'll put it on the calendar. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for showing up. It's good to see some new faces, too.